Hey guys, it's Jill. Welcome back to my channel. Welcome if you are new. So today we are going to be doing some sheet pan meals. I know that you guys enjoyed these the last time I did it. So I figured that I would bring them back again. They are so incredibly easy. And I actually did some meal prepping prior to. So all of these are legit dump and go. Because if you go ahead and do like maybe 15 to 20 minutes of prep prior to these meals literally just throw it on a sheet pan season your meals put it in there and you're good to go but we've got some steak we've got some uh philly cheesesteak we're going to be making some chicken nachos in the oven on a sheet pan so i hope that you enjoy them if you do you know what to do go ahead and give this video a big thumbs up and let's go ahead without further ado get into these sheet pan dinners. They're so simple and so easy and so yummy. So tonight we're making steaks and what we're going to do, I'm really trying to make these meals kind of like dump and go sheet pan meals. So there may be some things that I've done to prep prior to, or I'm just gonna start using frozen vegetables so I'm not sitting here chopping so much. Here I have two bags of these steam in the bag red potatoes and I've just already cooked them because the steaks don't take very long at all to cook. So you do want to pre-cook your potatoes, whether that's you getting regular potatoes and you cooking them on the um, stove top, like boiling them, or you cook them in the microwave like this. So you just dump them on there, and then I'm just going to dump this Steamable zucchini blend. I have a gosh darn fly in here if you guys can see it. it so we're just gonna pop that on there too. We are going to take some olive oil or some zucchini oil, whatever. <laughs> zucchini oil, really? Y'all, did you hear what I said? Zucchini oil. So take some, is this, this isn't open yet, so I'm gonna use my olive oil. So you want two tablespoons and you just wanna coat your potatoes and whatever kind of veggie you want to use. And then here I have some top sirloin steak. So they look like this. And we're just gonna season this with salt, pepper, and garlic powder. So very simple. And then once the steak is cooked, we are going to top it with some garlic parmesan butter. So depending on how you like your steak, I like mine a little bit more well done. I'm not into the blood, it kind of grosses me out. So depending on how you like it is how long you're going to broil this for. Um, if you like it medium rare, do it for like four to five minutes on each side. I'll let you know what it's like for, um, I guess like medium well is probably how I'm going to cook these. But I'm just going to pop these in the oven and show you what it looks like and what we are, how we're going to plate this up because the kids are going to have mm -hmm. salads on the side, I think. Okay, so I broiled for four minutes on each side and then it was still just too pink for me, but the potatoes had kind of starting to get a little charred. So what I did was I turned the oven on 375 and I cooked for 10 minutes and it's pretty much well done. Like I said, not very many people like their potatoes, <laughs> potatoes, <laughs> like their steaks well done, but I do. Okay, so here is dinner, you guys. I tried this butter and it is delicious you need to try it it's from walmart and it's garlic parmesan and basil seasoned butter it is so incredibly good and yes i put some on, on my potatoes too and i shouldn't have but you know what you only live once um but yeah this is really good the steak is not like it wasn't super flavorful because we didn't really add a whole lot of seasoning to it so this butter is definitely where it's at when it comes to the steak dinner. And then, as you can see, I have my zucchini and my squash. 
which is kind of like mush, but it's okay. Okay, so tonight we are making Philly cheesesteak, which I'm so excited about. So what you're going to want to put on your sheet pan is some foil. And you can do flank steak. I went ahead and I went for stir fry because I did not, like I literally wanted this to be a complete dump and go, have to do nothing type of dinner. Um, what is this going on right here? Okay, that's another piece. So yeah, this is all already chopped up for me, which is exactly what I wanted. So we are going to put this, that's just a big chunk, but whatever. Um, we're going to season this with one tablespoon of Worcestershire sauce, some salt, some pepper, and then one tablespoon of olive oil or avocado oil. I have avocado oil, so that's what I'm going to be seasoning it with. You also want your oven preheating to 350 degrees currently, and that's what mine is heated to. So, tablespoon of oil, and you just want to kind of rub this on the meat. Tablespoon of Worcestershire. It's hard to kind of rub it on because it kind of just went everywhere, but you know what I mean. Salt and pepper it. I'm about to go wash my hands again. And then we're literally going to dump onions, peppers, and mushrooms all around this meat. So to your onions, bell peppers, and mushrooms, you want to add in half a tablespoon of oil and one tablespoon of Worcestershire sauce. So we've got that down in this little bowl. I'm just gonna throw these mushrooms in there. I don't know if this is gonna work. Hopefully it will. I already chopped up two onions. So we're gonna do these onions. Just throw them on in there. And then we have some colorful bell peppers. And if you don't want to do this, you can go ahead and meal prep this, like when you get home from the grocery store or whatever your meal prep day is. So that way when you come to cook it, it literally is a dump and go and it literally takes minutes to just cook this. Um, or I should have totally poured the oil and Worcestershire over. So what I'm going to do is add just a little bit more. But what you can also do is you can also buy all this stuff frozen. I'm not sure if you can buy mushrooms frozen, but I do know for sure that you can buy, uh, sorry by the way, my dishwasher's going. Uh, I do know that you can buy peppers and onions already frozen, chopped up. So if you want this to be a liter literal dump and go to where you don't even have to do any prep the week before or the days before it, not the week before, the day before. I'm making a mess, y'all. So we're just going to make sure everything is nice and coated. We're gonna put this in the oven. Let me check. For 15 minutes. And then what I'm going to do is toast some sub rolls, which I have right here. And I'm going to put the provolone cheese in the sub roll, not on any of this. The recipe calls for you to coat cheese or this with cheese, and I don't want to do it that way. So I'm going to add a little bit more salt and pepper to the veggies. And we're going to throw this into our preheated 350 degree oven, bake it for 15 minutes, and I will show you how our Philly cheesesteaks come out. So this is what everything looked like at the end of cooking and I was on the phone with my mom because I was like, are you sure that the juice was like a little bloodier than I would have liked it to be? And she was like, no, it's fine. So I was like, are you sure? So that's why I'm doing a voiceover. But this is what uh, dinner looked like that night. We just, like I said, I toasted up some rolls and put some Parmesan, no, provolone cheese on top. And then we just put the steak and the veggies on top and we had our Philly cheesesteaks that night. Okay, so today we're going to be making some chicken nachos on the sheet pan, and I could not be more excited. So, 
What you're going to need are some tortilla chips. I had these in Hint of Lime and they were so good. I ordered them again um, from Walmart Delivery, but they were all out, so I just have traditional. Uh, you're going to need some black beans. You're going to want to rinse and drain these. You're going to want some southwestern corn, which really is just corn with poblano and red peppers. And then you're going to want to use some refried beans, some pico de gallo, and some cooked chicken, which this is frozen. Hopefully it'll work. You're also going to want some cheese. I'm going to use this um, Fiesta blend reduced fat. However much ingredients you need of each, like the recipe said to use two cups of Monterey Jack and cheddar cheese blend, a can of corn, um, a full cup of fresh pico de gallo. Um, but what you're wanting to do is you're going to put the chips in a single layer all throughout the sheet pan. And then you're going to spread a little bit of refried bean on there, top it with a little bit of black bean, top it with a little bit of corn, top it with some of the... Uh, pico, top it with cheese, top it with some chicken, and then you're going to pop it in the oven for 15 to 20 minutes until everything is golden brown. And then from there, you'll serve it with guacamole, sour cream, salsa, hot sauce, whatever you'd serve up with your nachos. So this is a little tedious considering the fact that you have to do each individual tortilla chip, which I'm kind of like, do I want to do that? because it is going to be really time consuming, but I also have two little humans that are going to come help me, two little cuties. I don't know why I just said two little humans. But yeah, two little cuties that are going to come help me. So hopefully it won't take us too long. I'm just going to go ahead and rinse these things. We'll rinse these two, or drain, rinse, and then we're going to see how we're going to work with this frozen chicken. And then we're going to pop it in the oven. It's already preheated to 400, so we're going to let it cook for... 15 and 20 minutes and we'll show you what our nachos look like when they're done. So for these, at first I was spreading each individual and I was like, this is taking way too long. So I literally just started plopping everything on the onto the tortilla chips and it ended up coming out just fine. So don't waste your time on trying to spread it on each individual chip. Just kind of plop it, do your thing. They're going to come out delicious no matter what. So here is our chicken nachos made on the sheet pan. We cannot wait to dig in. I'll let you guys know what we thought of these, but I can already tell you, oh, look at that chicken. That chicken turned out perfect. Ooh, hot, obviously. But yeah, chicken cooked perfect. These look divine. I'm gonna top mine with some sour cream and go to town. So I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, you know what to do. Give it a big thumbs up. Comment down below in which one 
which one do you think is going to be your favorite or that you're going to try first? I'm going to talk about them real quick. The steak, they were all really good. <coughs> Excuse me. The steak with the potatoes, delicious. I would not, however, use frozen squash again on a sheet pan. I think I would save that more for the frying pan. But the steak with the butter, so good, so quick, so easy. Throw it on there, put it in the oven, so quick, so easy. The sheet pan nachos, they were so good and such a hit. I can see that being something perfect, perfect, perfect for if you're having a gathering, which I know most of us are not, but if you're having a bunch of people over or, you know, in the future, like pin it or go back to this video and you can remember if you're having a large crowd, this would be a total crowd pleaser. And then just leave like, um, you do like a little nacho bar where you can have the sheet pan right there with the nachos already made and you can do sour cream, guacamole, salsa, um, like the cheese dip. Oh, so good. So, so, so good. Highly recommend. And they were so easy doing it that way too. Um, your chicken does have to be cooked, but when you do what I did, which is buying the, the frozen chicken, which was actually really good. Um, it's just so simple and so quick and easy. And the third one, I know I usually do like between five to six, but for this video, I just decided to make it a little shorter. So for the sheet pan Philly cheesesteak, this one was our least favorite. The, the steak was just a little, <clears throat> having a coughing bit over here. The steak was just a little not tender at all. Like it, it just wasn't tender. Um, and it may have been the different, I, I, I want to say I still got a flank steak because that's what it says in the recipe. I also feel like it wasn't very flavorful. So it was definitely still really good, but it's definitely not something that I would make for me and the kids again. If I was going to do something like that, I would definitely do it in the crock pot. And I probably have something similar if I don't. I need to in an upcoming crock pot video. What do you guys think? Do you have a Philly cheesecake? Philly cheesecake? Philly cheesesteak recipe for the crock pot. I have already done it. Y'all, I need to start writing down the recipes that I do because I've done so many crock pot videos at this point and have shared so many recipes that I'm like, what have I not shared? Um, and with soup season coming up, y'all, y'all know I'm getting excited for my crock pot. Like, oh my gosh, I'm actually working on meals this week and I'm so excited. Anyways, we are not talking about the crock pot, but if I haven't done one, let me know in the comments down below. And also if you have one, let me know in the comments down below and I will feature you in an upcoming uh, crock pot video because I would love to do Philly cheesesteaks in the crock pot. I think that would be so delicious. So thank you guys so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed it again, please give it a thumbs up. I love you guys so incredibly much. Have an amazing day and I will see you in the next one. Bye.